Because when he proposes something, he will be what? He is able to what? Dispose it. Now, we have to understand here some lessons about God's outstanding choice. We have to understand that there are no accidents in life. No accidents in life. Take note of that. Everything that occurs is part of the larger plan of God. God is working often behind the scenes in ways that we cannot comprehend to accomplish His plans and His purposes. Let's read uh, Isaiah 55, 8-9, please. A very familiar verse, and everybody knows this. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the, than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. There are no accidents in life. Amen? Another thing here. In Psalm, Psalms 37, 23. Psalms 37, 23. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And he delighteth in his way. Amen. Thank God for the truth. That God is in absolute control. Amen. There are no accidents. Not only that. God is well able to bring his plan to pass. He will do that. He will never propose a plan that he is not able to accomplish. Always put that in mind. Whether it is a plan to raise up a shepherd boy and make him as a king, or whether it is a plan to work out his will in your life, he is well able to see it through. Amen? God is shaping us. God is planning something in our lives. All we have to do is to wait for the perfect timing in our lives. Why? In Ephesians 3.20, we can see that. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. Why? God is good all the time. When he says that I can do all, th- oh, I mean, when he says that nothing is impossible with him. Not only that, God's sovereign choices extend to every area of our life. I like this. We don't understand everything. Amen? We don't understand everything. But again, we have to understand that the Bible is teaching us that God is in the business of working things for us. Are you happy with that? He's working on you. That's why there's a song, God, uh, He is still working on me. Amen? Wow. I I like that. He's working in you. He's not yet done in your life. Hey, why are you sitting there? Why, why are you frowning here? Hey, be happy. Because God is still working in your life. Not only in your life, but also in my life. We are His children. Okay. That's why some people may think that they were bothered. Okay. The notion that God is in absolute control. But again, for us Christians, it should be comforting. We should be glad in these things. Amen? Why? Because nothing can happen unless the Father ordains it. And that of He ordains it. It is for our good and it is for His glory. Thank God for His outstanding choices. Point number two. Here in verse 6. Now here in verse 4. I'm sorry. And Samuel did that which the Lord spake and came to Bethlehem. And the elders of the town trembled at his coming and said, Comest thou peaceably? So of course, we have to understand that the, they were afraid at the arrival of uh, Samuel. Because if we're going to study the Bible, uh, Samuel has had uh, three offices. He's a prophet. He's also the priest at the same time. 
and he is also a judge. Now, remembering what happened in uh, 1 Samuel chapter 15 when uh, Samuel uh, turned uh, Agag into pieces. So when Samuel arrived in that place, people were scared. Oh, what's the reason why Samuel is here? Is he going to judge us? But again, verse 5, and he said, Peaceably I am come to sacrifice unto the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and he called them to the sacrifice. Verse 6, and it came to pass when they were come that he looked on Eliab and said, Surely the Lord's anointed is before him. Point number two here, God's choices are unexpected. Amen. Now here, Samuel here is said to anoint the new king. Now, when Samuel here uh, arrives there, he commands uh, Jesse to gather together uh, to gather his sons. So, what happened here is that they come before the old prophet and pass his uh, children one by one. And it is the process that God makes known his choice for king. You have to understand that God's choices are not only, out, not only uh, outstanding, but his choices also are unexpected. Now, here, first, verse 6. It's rejections. No? Now the first, Jesus, uh, the first of Jesse's sons passes before Samuel. His name was Eliab. No? Which means God is father. No. He's a fine man. Okay? Strong. And Samuel uh, thinks or thought that he is surely the chosen one. Yes, but God says here, I have refused him. Now when you say, the Bible says when you say refused here, simply means reject. No? Eliab here might have a, uh, a pleasing, uh, uh, good pleasing uh, personality here. I'm talking about outwardly, but something here in his character disqualified him. Now we can see that later on, if you can... If you move to uh, chapter 17. Now, God said, I rejected him. The next one is Abinadab. His name means, my father is noble. No. But he too is passed over and was also rejected by the Lord. The next one was Shama. No. His Name means astonishment. Uh, maybe it's because uh, of his uh, physical size, of his, or it might be his physical uh, trait here, but he too was rejected. Then one after another, Jesus' sons passed before Samuel until seven have passed by, and all are rejected by the Lord. Now, let me clarify this. Uh, I forgot the verse. I think in First Chronicles there. I forgot the chapter. Something like uh, where these. Now later on, uh, as I remember that one. But again, surely these men all have that physical specimens here. But again, any one of them would have possessed that. Uh, physical requirement to be the head or the next king of Israel but none of them possess the right kind of character traits here God said I have refused them why? here in verse 7 but the Lord said unto Samuel looked not on his countenance now this is our problem most of the time amen we are almost uh, we are always after on that outward appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth, for man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. We have to understand that God sees what man cannot see. 
We have to understand that. Now, even somewhere, Samuel here was impressed by impressed here by the physical loot of the elder brothers of uh, uh, David. But again, here God wasn't impressed by these people. No, you would have thought that Samuel would have learned his lesson of what happened to King Saul. No, they also choose God, King Saul. Uh, based on his outward appearance, I, I thought. Yes, which is right, I think. But again, but someone is still looking at men through human eyes. Yes, we are the same in such a way. Yeah. We're the same. Even Samuel was impressed by Eliab. But again here, we see a young man. Yes, he's handsome, well-spoken. Wow. This person might be the next preacher. But again, we don't know the heart. We don't know the heart. Or other, other times we might say, oh, this person is saved. Okay? He loves his parents. Oh, he's a good man. Good standing. Okay? It could be a uh, deacon in the church. It could be one of the preachers in the church. But again, we don't know the heart. And most of the time, this is our problem. Sometimes we might think that uh, uh, a person which we thought that can do a lot of things for the Lord, but not that, that this person actually uh, cannot even reach Okay? At the belief of the uh, rank of God, that God uh, really wanted to have in His work. And those people who we are, whom we are rejecting is the one being used by God mightily in His work. We really don't know. That's why God makes choices based not on what we see. Not on the outward characteristics, but based on the heart. That's very important. Yes, we're guilty with that. Another thing here, not only it's rejections, but only also in qualifications. Okay? God's choices are unexpected in its rejections, its qualifications. No. Here, God tells Samuel that he does not look at the physical attributes of a man. Now, God looks at the character of a man's heart. No? The reason why Paul Evers is being the king, because God had already determined to raise another man with the right kind of heart. In 1 Samuel chapter 13, verse 14. No? You might see that the sons of Jesse here, the student there, wow, they could be the next king of Israel. They look the part to be the, the king of Israel. But what Samuel he could not see was the condition of their hearts. The condition of the hearts. Oh, Eliab, for instance, the first time Samuel saw him, he thought that he would be the next king. Yes. But again, if we're going to continue in uh, chapter 17, Eliab is critical. He is a jealous man and he is a negative person. But again, he may have been big man externally, but he was a baby inside. He was not the kind of man God could use for his glory. Now, Again, if we continue this, the history. Oh. No one would ever think that God can use King Saul. Oh, I mean, uh, Saul of Tarsus. To be the apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ. Everybody knows about this life. Amen. Now let's take a look in 1 Timothy chapter 1, 12 to 16. 
First Timothy, chapter 1, 12 to 16. That's why you never know what God will do with the unknown people. And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who hath enabled me for that he counted me faithful putting me into the ministry. Who was before a blasphemer, that's true, and a persecutor and injurious, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Howbeit for this cause I obtained mercy that in me first Jesus Christ might shew forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. Who would have thought that Saul of Tarsus will be used by God mightily for his work? Nobody thought about that. Amen. And he's one of the apostles who wrote most of the books here in the New Testament. He was used by God. And he was the apostle to the Gentiles. Not only that, Peter, who have been used like uh, he was by the Lord. After the way he fell. They've been using by God. That's why you really cannot underestimate when God chooses somebody unexpectedly. Amen. We might keep looking down on people. Oh, this one cannot be used by God anymore. He fell many, many times. Hey, 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 hey. God is still working with that person. God is working on that person. Lastly. Amen. Amen. Lastly. God's choices are unique. Do you believe in that? God's choices are unique. Now. Going to our text here. Verses 11 to 13. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Are here all thy children? And he said, There remaineth yet the youngest. And behold, he keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Send and fetch him, for we will not sit down. You know, God's choices are unique. If you are going to notice this verse here, we can see how David was uh, being uh, underestimated by his family. Amen? See here? His name wasn't even mentioned by his father. Second, he wasn't even invited in the feast, sacrificial feast here. And third, he will not uh, be called to come to the, uh, meet uh, Samuel if Samuel did not insist. Send and fetch him, for we will not sit down till he come. God's choices are unique. And here in verse 12, and he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and with all of a beautiful countenance and goodly to look to. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. Again, God's choices are unique. Those who are prepared. Do you believe in that? So when Jesse and David's brothers are brought before Samuel here, they are sanctified. Here in verse 5. Oh. In other words, their sins are dealt with and they are made ready to worship. But when David here 
was brought, there is no time for him to be sanctified. But he is prepared, uh, prepared here nonetheless. He was prepared. Then, that's why David is a picture of that believer who keeps his heart in a state of readiness. Be ready from time to time. When you will be called to preach, be ready. Amen. 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 Be ready. When you are called to do something for the Lord, be ready. When you will be asked to do a task, be ready. Prepared. Be prepared most of the time. That's why he does not know when the Lord might call him. So he stays prepared at all times. That's very important. That is the kind of person God is looking for today as well. Amen? He uses those who are prepared for his call. Amen? That's if you remember, uh, you've heard Pastor Joel said this many, many times. God will not call somebody to start a mission work if you are just sitting there and <laughs> waiting for something. You're not even helping the ministry. You're not even involved in the ministry in the church. Then you will say that you want to start a work somewhere. Hey, that's ridiculous. Because God is using the vessels who are prepared and ready for His work. That's unique. Amen? Now, not only that, those who are responsible. Responsible. Why? When Samuel asked uh, about uh, David, David was in, in the field, tending the sheep. He was responsible. So when God calls David, he finds him faithfully doing what he has been told to do. And that was what? He was keeping the sheep. He is doing the dirty job. He is do, doing the dirty uh, work, the lonely job. But he does it because it was the work that has been assigned to him. He was responsible. Amen? He was responsible. After he, he was anointed here, in verse 19, he went back to his flock. In verse 19. Why? Because that is what he does. Amen? That is what he does. Even after he is called to Jerusalem to play for King Saul, what happened here in verse 23? We're going to take a look here. He returned to keep his father's sheep in the field. He was responsible. Amen? Very responsible. Why? Because that was what he does. Responsible. David was given an assignment and he carried it out. What? The most important thing. He carried it out faithfully. That's the most important thing. He even placed his life on the line to protect those sheep. Let's take a look. There's Sister Milka, chapter 17, 34 to 37. No, he even placed his life on the line to protect those sheep. And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep. And there came a lion, look at that, and a bear, and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went out after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. Thy servants slew both the lion and the bear, and these are circumcised Philistines shall be as one of them, seeing he hath defied the armies of the living God. David said, Moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, Go, and the Lord be with thee. Amen. He placed his life on the line to protect those sheep. No. So when David looked at David, he saw a young man, the youngest of his sons. And when his brother saw him, he saw a little brat here. 
But when, Sa when Samuel saw David, no, he might say, oh, verse 12, Roddy, huh? maybe a cute boy, <laughs> might say that as well. Now, when I say Roddy here, it's something like a uh, fair complexion during those times. Now, uh, a fair complexion during those times, uh, in the ancient time, uh, that was very attractive during those times. Okay, that was attractive on them. No. Kaya nga, during the time, uh, somewhere uh, 1800s, no, the princes of uh, Iran, no, they have mustache. No, yung mga babae during kasi those time, pag may mustache ka, napakaganda mo. That was during that time, not this time. Pag ngayon sa time na may mustache ng babae, pagtatawanan yan. No? So the same thing here. Ruddy. Okay? And with all of a beautiful countenance and goodly to look to. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. So when God looked at David, he saw integrity, faithfulness, responsibility, and character. Amen? So others saw David as a nobody, but God saw David as a king of Israel. Amen? Amen? So again, if you want to be used by the Lord, let me encourage you this afternoon to be faithful. Okay? To be faithful where you are. Be faithful where you are. That's a very important thing here. The best thing you can do is to grow where you are planted. Eh? Amen. Yeah. To grow where you are planted. No? It is not something like you are hopping. Eh, I'm not growing in this church. I'll go. No, no. Grow in that place where God planted you. And later on you will see the result. Now, allow God to develop your character. Allow God to develop your integrity, your faithfulness, and your sense of responsibility in the ordinary things of life. Be faithful for that. Be prepared and be responsible. Amen? That's why this is a lesson that the church must uh, learn as well today. That's why when we look for leaders, we often uh, seek uh, those who possess uh, certain characteristics here that we think uh, this people or this person might have that ability. But again, sometimes we look for people of influence, power, intelligence, and means. But again, God, however, looks for people of integrity and character. Amen. We already made that mistake for those people around us before. But I'm so thankful to the Lord that God placed faithful people here in the church right now serving the Lord. We have to take care of our heart. Not on the outward appearance of a person we might think. Amen? So God is not nearly as impressed with people's achievements as we are. Of course. Achievements. That's why I remember Brother John when he said, uh, one of the preachers said before he will preach, he will <laughs> say first his accomplishment. <laughs> it's, it's really disturbing, amen? Yeah. Because when you preach behind the pulpit, you have to preach the word of God. You don't need to tell about yourself. People are not concerned about your life, but they're concerned about the word of God you're going to preach to them. Hey. Amen. <laughs> it's so funny, but that is really true. This is happening nowadays. That's why he is not concerned about the beauty of our outward man, but he's caught up in the condition of our heart. Amen. That's why I, as God looks in your life, what does he see? Does he see a handsome face, a beautiful face? 
goodly appearance, a good appearance, a well-dressed individual. But again, God sees your heart. God sees the purpose why you are here. I hope our purpose why we are here is right with God. Amen. And that is really important because God will not be pleased when our purpose isn't right or is in accordance with Him. That's very important. Oh, but the real question here, does God see a heart that He can use? Or does He say about your life the same thing as what He said here, I have refused Him. What does God see in your heart? And I hope God is seeing something good in our hearts this afternoon. Amen. We must be thankful for the Lord for this opportunity that He has given to us. You have to love the church. Amen. Love, the, love your family. Love the ministry that He entrusted to you. Let us support that the work here in, the, uh, in this place will continue to prosper. That our goal must be for God, not for ourselves. That is very, very important. See? Yeah. Are you thinking something when you are at home? Lord, you're really faithful. Amen? Dapat, tingnan din natin yun sa ating buhay. That's why, lastly here, not only that, God's choices are unique, prepared, responsible, and not only that, recognition. Now, this is what I said a while ago. Verse 13 then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. For Jesse and the brothers of Samuel, uh, David, they don't really know that what's the purpose of Samuel, why he was there. Amen? Because Samuel did not reveal what's his purpose, why he was there. They might think the other way, they did not think uh, anyhow why, why David was the one who was anointed. Nobody knows. But again here, remember, David has seven brothers. Now let's take a look in First Chronicles 12, uh, First Chronicles 2, 12 to 16. We're almost done. This is the last point. And Boaz begat Obed, and Obed begat Jesse. And Jesse begat his firstborn Eliab, one, and Abinadab the second, and Shema the third, or Shama, it's the same. Nathaniel the fourth, Radai the fifth, Ozim the sixth, and David the seventh. Hey, Brother Rilson, I thought David has seven brothers. So in all, they should, they should be eight. So that, does, this, uh, does it mean that the Bible here is a contradiction? No, no, no. We have to understand that uh, the biblical genealogies here often did not include every ancestor in a family line. For example, when a child died without leaving any children. Or she or he was usually omitted from the record. That's why the, se the seventh brother here of David was not mentioned. Amen? Amen, Paul? Okay. But again, that's the reason why uh, his name was, wasn't mentioned here. But again, David has seven brothers. Because here in this uh, chapter here, looks like David has only uh, six brothers. Now, we have to understand here that after the seven sons of Jesse have passed before Samuel and all have been rejected, Samuel finds out that there is another son, and that was the youngest, and that was David. At first here, you might think that uh, Samuel might say, Oh Lord, what, ha what is happening now? 
seven sons of Jesse. Now, where's the king? Who will be the next king? But he never said anything about God, about that. He might say, okay, uh, maybe I will ask the, the seven sons of Jesse to uh, pass by once again. So that I will choose the next king. But he didn't say anything. You know what? What you can see is that Samuel trusted the Lord. Samuel knew the word of God completely. He just trusted the Lord because he knows that the Lord knows what he's doing. Amen? Now, it is very important in our lives to really recognize and understand how the Lord is molding and doing something for us. Now, again, the youngest. So when he walks in here, Samuel sees the young man, a handsome young man, bright-eyed, intellectual, with the blast in his cheeks here. So God tells Samuel to anoint David, the one rejected and passed over by the others is the very one picked by the Lord. Amen. So no doubt here, Jesse and his sons were all amazed as they watched the prophet Samuel here. Hobbled over the young David and poured the oil, the anointing oil on his head. That's why we must be careful how we assess those things around us. Amen. So we look at people and think we know who will you. Or who God will use and what He will do with them. That's why, brothers and sisters in the Lord, you never know. You never know. Amen. God often passes over the ones other would choose and calls those who would never have imagined. Those people who are unique, those people who are unexpected. So when God went after a man, after his God's own heart, again, what we have noticed here that he did not go to the palaces. Amen? He did not go to noble people or to wealthy people or to influential people. But again here, God chose the most unlikely person in the most what, unlikely places. So the key to being used of him is possessing the right kind of heart. Amen. So again, don't lose hope. When God is dealing you, be thankful to the Lord. Later on, God will let you stand again and God will use you mightily for his glory. Don't think or never entertain what other people will say against you. As long as you know that you are doing the work of the Lord, as long as you are approved in the eyes of God, then go for the Lord. Not on those people around. Amen? That's when God chose us. Amen? So again here, as we end, not only that. Pinapatigil na ako ni baby. Ang cute na mukha. That's why you never know the call of God will come. Amen? He knows where you are and He knows how to find you. Amen? He knows how and when to open all the right doors in your life. Are you excited with that? That's why just be faithful to Him and walk with Him. And it's time He will use you for His glory. And lastly, not only that, God's choices are unique. Those who are redeemed. Amen? Those who are saved. So when Samuel anointed David, babe, everybody was... What? David? They might, be, uh, they might uh, be surprised. But again, no doubt David had seen the glory of God. 
during this event. And his power, man, the uh, power of God manifested in his life. That's why David had witnessed God's tender care for his people in his own relationship to his flocks. There were times that when he was on the field enjoying his work faithfully and worshiping the Lord at the same time. He was redeemed. Amen? And this is the evident here in Psalm 23. Everybody knows this verse. Amen? Reveals the heart of David while he was still young. While he was still a young shepherd. So David had been walking with the Lord for quite some time right now. So David's own testimony here that we can see in 1 Samuel chapter 17 verse 37. That can notify us how he trusted the Lord in his life. Amen. It's not an easy work. Being a shepherd is not a funny work. You might not know that the lion is uh, now attacking some of those sheep that you are tending. A bear might come. But again, he's trusted the Lord and able to uh, slew all of these uh, animals. Again, the point here is that God calls those who know Him. Amen? Because God will not call somebody those who are not saved. He chooses His vessels from among His redeemed ones. That's why God is still looking for people He can call and use for His glory. Amen? Do you love that? So can you honestly say that your life is ready and available right now? Can you say that? Or do you possess the kind of character God is looking for? Or if you know there are problems in your walk with the Lord, all we have to do is to humble ourselves and come to Him and surrender our lives and let God work in us. And that's the most important thing. Now if you have a desire to be used by the Lord, then... Pray. Pray for the Lord. Pray to the Lord. And be committed, be devoted, and be faithful to Him uh, to Him for the rest of your life. Take note that all our needs will be met because He is always faithful. You know, as what I've said to you, I'm not bragging this, but again, as what I've said, when I said to you before that I'm not afraid of, God, of what God is uh, doing in my life. See, the pandemic for almost seven months God is very, very faithful to us. Okay? He's faithful. That's why. Wag po tayong matakot sa mga sinasabi ng ibang tao. And all we have to do is to strengthen ourselves in God. God chooses you. God chooses me. God chooses us to be in His service. Again, let's continue to pray for one another. Pray for our pastor. Pray for each every one of us. Because this is the highest calling. Amen. Before we end, I can't remember anything that the Lord had forsaken me in my family in this place. I cannot remember anything about that. Because all I can remember is His goodness and His faithfulness in my life. That's all I can do. Be faithful to Him. Shall we all stand?
Allow me, Father, thank you once again, Lord, for your word.